to Tune of the Month, and happy May, happy spring. I hope it's spring where you are. This month, I have for you a Scottish Pipe March. It's been a little while since we've done a Scottish tune, and I think we've got no, like, true pipe marches on the series yet. Don't know how that happened, because I love pipe marches. This is a very famous, very old tune. It's called The Burning of the Piper's Hut, and it goes like this. And that's the tune. If you're just listening, thanks so much for stopping by. I'll see you next month. And if you're ready to learn it, let's dive in. All right. So you probably already heard that I'm doing, as I play this, everything I possibly can to make my instrument sound like a bagpipe. And we're going to get into how to do that um, in terms of the ornaments, in terms of what kind of sound you want to create, in terms of the rhythm. But first, we got to learn a tune. This thing is in B minor. What an extraordinary key. I love it. And um, it's pretty simple construction. Pipe marches tend to be very straightforward melodies because we're going to do a lot to decorate them. Here we go. I'm going to play that A section slowly. I'm going to keep the ornaments in, um, but we'll talk about them as we go. Ready? And... This is a classic part one, part two, part one comes back, and then there's an ending. Classic construction for a fiddle tune, or a pipe tune in this case. Um, and I also took the ornaments out on the repeat so you could hear really how simple and pure this melody is. All right, so part one, we'll break it down very quickly, um, is uh, that B minor scale, right? Yeah, try just that much. And already while we're doing this, start getting a bagpipe swing and feel into your bow arm. You notice when I have the dotted rhythms, I'm really making them very snappy. Tum ti ti tum len, tum ti ti tum len, right? And my bowing is designed to set those snap dotted rhythms up in this lower part of the bow. 
So I'm going to slur these next two. So I end up on that down bow ready to snap. Do it one more time with a super snappy Scottish rhythm. Yeah, part two keeps going. This has a little bit of an A major chord. Yeah, try it again. I have two pickups I'm slurring in. A major. So the bowing that I'm getting here is what I call a little swing. You see, I'm kind of swinging my arm. And that's that marching feel that we want to accomplish, right? So I serve my pickups, swing your arm. And here's another one of those snappy rhythms. There you go, try it again, part two. Swing. Snap it. Good, now we go back to part one. Up the scale, snappy. And the ending. It starts almost like the part two, doesn't it? Yeah, so the big swing. Long lift and right? I have this long. It's an up, up land that gives it a little lift. Lift it. Do the whole ending. Ready? Swing, swing. Long lift and and that's the whole A section. Really simple melody, but you can already see there's a lot of intricacies in terms of how you want to be using your right hand if you're a bowed string player um, or your sound production. If you're a wind player, you want to be imitating these sounds. We all want to sound like bagpipes in this tune. Let's, let's just tell it like it is. Put the whole A section together and really use these gestures. Starts with that snappy rhythm. Two, three, and snap. Long. just getting that uh, those gestures in your bar and making it super rhythmic it already sounds very very bagpipey all right let's keep those same ideas going and look at the B section melody and then we'll circle back and put the left hand ornaments in here's my B section I'm gonna do the whole thing slowly starts out part one You're right. Very, very often, pipe marches, the B section is almost just like a little variation on the A section, and that's true here. So I start with that same up the B minor scale. But instead of just having the long note, we got a little bit of action there. You feel it? So to make that work, of course leaving my first finger down on both strings so it's really easy to snap back and forth do it again part one do it one more time notice I'm really staying in the lower half for those snappy rhythms good by the way if you need a couple more repetitions of this or any other section just rewind the video do it a whole bunch but I'm going on now to part two which is just a variation of the A section part two. Now 
Notice it's the same pattern that we just used in part one. One more time. All right, so I'm really letting those up bows sink into the string and travel a little bit, but not too far. Which is lengthening all the melody notes, right? Ba ba ba, da da da. Those are the important ones. Lengthen. And those little snaps in between that I'm keeping in the lower half get de emphasized a little bit in terms of how hard I'm playing them, right? I'm playing them very easy, but the snappy rhythm allows them to come out cleanly without my having to do a whole lot of stuff. If I try and play um, in an emphasized way on those little notes, this is what it's going to sound like. I'm only going to do this once. It's just, it's no good, right? You can hear it's overplayed. It sounds hard. No good. So here, the strength comes from being very light and very precise and snappy and clean with the rhythm. It's cleanliness, not power, that gets you through a pipe march. Yeah, and then we go back to part one. And then the same ending from the A section. How nice when you get to use that ending. I call it a cloud ending when it's the same for both sections. Do it one more time. Swing, swing, long lift and end. Let's put the B section together. Two, three, up the scale. Part two. your bagpipe choreography and your sound in the bow. Very smooth, very clean, very rhythmic. That's the sound of the bagpipe, right? It's the most like piercingly clean, clear sound you'll ever hear when it's done by good bagpipers, which I love. All right, so if we want to imitate the bagpipes even more, the place you really start to bring that out once your sound is set is in your left hand, right? And uh, we've talked about lots of different kinds of ornaments in past Tune of the Month videos. We're going to use all of them here. If I refer to a kind of ornament that you've never heard of before or seen before, just go check out past Tune of the Month videos where we break them down in great detail. Here I'm going to go a little bit quickly because I'll assume you've seen these guys before and we're looking at how to use them in the piping style. All right. So the whole idea of where you want to put a left hand grace note is wherever you have space. Uh, like long notes. And you notice that this tune, when you take the ornaments out, has a lot of long notes because it's been constructed to give maximum opportunity for left hand ornamentation. Or I guess bagpipers wouldn't call it left hand ornamentation, it's both hands and they just do it. All right, so right off the bat, I'm doing kind of a throne roll there. And the same thing on the top there. And so those are uh, rolls that we've talked about before. A roll is very quickly, you play the pitch that you intend, a note above the pitch, a note below, and come back to the pitch. But for me, with the bagpipes, I'm actually rolling with my third finger. It gives it a little more of that open, like pentatonic pipe sound. Now, a throne roll is my name for a specific kind of roll. All rolls are the same notes, but where you allow the extra notes to happen changes the feel. A throne roll is as on the front of the beat as you possibly can. It actually anticipates where the regular note would start. And I throw it so quickly that you almost don't even hear the pitches. 
right? So you probably don't hear da 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 da. You just hear bra bra, and that's because the bagpipes um, aren't really playing notes with that. They're just uh, this this hole in my fiddle f hole. I'm using like a bagpipe hole. They're just stopping the air and letting it go. Stop and let it go. It's like a little interruption. So I don't need to hear those pitches. Throne roll, and then the same thing there at the top. And again, all right, so three throne rolls right in a row before I'm even out of the first two measures. Three. Now here, for a little variation, I'm using what uh, has been nicknamed the Mari Black combo, which sounds a little bit like a roll, but it's different. It's a combination of a hammer-on, single grace below, and a tap, which is a, a touch of the note below. So I hammer on, interrupt it with a tap, and then land where I belong. If that's a quick explanation for you, go back, check out past Tune of the Month videos. We wallow in it gloriously. But for now, three throne rolls and a Mari Black combo. <laughs> combo. And that's just a regular old tap. And I'm tapping with my third finger, that's kind of the pipe sound. If I tap with my second finger, I get too much pitch. And my fourth finger just doesn't, it doesn't quite sit right for me, although there are plenty of Scottish uh, fiddlers who play great pipe marches with fourth finger taps. You'll have to try both out. I'd recommend either third or fourth. We're back to the beginning. Throw and roll. Throw. Throw. Combo. Here's a little, um, I guess this would be tap. And then on the top, the, the bottom there, I use a double tap. Or I guess the, it's either two taps or the second one becomes a throne roll. It depends on how fast my fingers are moving. Tap, throw. Yeah, I guess ideally I would go for the throne roll there, but if it's not moving fast enough, just get the tap. All right, so just with those ornaments, I'm, by the way, I move my ornaments around. If you watch again my performance of this tune at the beginning of the video, you'll hear that I use different ornaments each time round. That's how you create a lot of variation. I'm showing you this particular um, constellation of ornaments to give you an idea of where my favorites are. But really, you should be going through this and uh, taking each ornament type, like say, okay, I'm going to take a hammer on. How many places can I fit a hammer on in here? Okay, I'll take a tap. How many places can I fit in a tap? And like really explore what left hand ornaments fit into this tune at maximum capacity. From there, you'll pick your favorites and kind of mix and match across the different types to get lots of variation. But let's put this particular uh, ornament plan into practice. First uh, section, we got three throne rolls and a combo. Tap, tap, tap. Tap. All right, and you notice even as I played that through, I put more taps into the part two that I didn't really talk about because when it was slower, they got by me. But actually. tapping every single one of those strong beats. And they're, they're all four taps in a row. So yeah, every time you go through this, you'll probably find more places that you can or should or already are putting things. Um, and that's how it goes. All right, let's look a little bit at the B section. Um, same throne roll is a great place to start. So I don't ornament during those quick string crossings because I want to keep them very clean, but I do start with a throne roll. And here too. And then a little tap to finish. Yeah, now probably, I think what I'm about to do when I do this part two is the same idea of tapping the melody notes. Sure enough. Yeah, that's that's what I did. <laughs> Sometimes 
sometimes I'm not always aware of the, the ornaments that I'm choosing and I have to kind of predict what do I think I probably would do based on the structure of the tune. And that's a sensibility you want to develop in your playing too. It comes from trying a whole bunch of different things and finding your favorites. Back to part one, throw the roll, throw, keep it clean, tap. And the ending as before. And you have all the way through. So do you notice how much more pipey this starts to sound? Yeah, throne rolls are great. The combo is great. Taps are great. I'm not using as many hammer-ons in this because they're a very um, kind of melodic ornament. I would use that more for fiddle marches or in Irish tunes or things that are a little less like uh, brutally rhythmic. Um, I'm using here much more percussive ornaments because that's the sound of the bagpipes to me. The very best thing you could do working on your bagpipe ornamentation is to go listen to bagpipes play the tune. So go find a, a recording on YouTube or maybe in your CD collection of a really great piper playing Burning of the Piper's Hut. And then just steal everything that they do. That's how I get to where I go. Um, but at least breaking it down here with the fiddle idea, you can get an idea how fiddlers would approach it, which can translate to whistles. We all have different ornaments that we love to do. And the more we steal from each other, the better all of our ornaments get. So I hope that's fun for you guys. Absolutely take these ornaments, try them out in other pipe marches that you like. We may do a couple more here on Tune of the Month, because I love pipe marches. Um, as always, if you'd like to see sheet music for this, um, fair warning, it's an absolute mess when you write in the, the ornaments. You do not want to see this. Trust me, you don't want to see this. But if you don't trust me and you do want to see this, you can go to my website, www.mariblack.com and sign up for my email newsletter. Even if it's messy and horrifying, I will always send out the tune of the month sheet music along with my monthly email newsletter uh, for each month. So if you're already a member of the newsletter, you already have a, a horribly messy version of Burning of the Piper's Hut sitting in your inbox. And if you, uh, as I like to say, if you belong to the future and you subscribe um, in the future from when I'm recording this, you'll have all future tunes of the month coming to you, hopefully with a little less mess, but my handwriting's not getting any better, guys. Hope you have fun, and I'll look forward to seeing you out on the road or back here next month, or both. Bye.